Year of new permanent residents were added to Canada's population last year, 431,645. But the big question is how many are here to stay? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I recently posted a video that has received 55.8 thousand views so far. This is my number one video, the most popular video I've published to date. And because you guys enjoyed it so much, I've decided to post a second video on the topic of immigration and Canada. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out that first video. It's going to give you all of the necessary background information and it talks about this important debate that's taking place right now, which is why are we seeing record numbers of immigrants decide to leave Canada after living here for several years? So a lot of you guys left a lot of comments on the first video. I got a lot of positive feedback and I got a lot of mixed comments, people talking about the highs and lows of their experiences living in Canada. And a lot of people were offering their theories about why Canada is seeing a lot of immigrants leave. So what I did was I read through the comments and I decided to do a little bit of research. And what I'm going to do today is actually talk about some important updates um, and some information that's come out from the Government of Canada website and various news sources. So some people left comments on the first video talking about how they think people have decided to leave Canada because of the lack of jobs or the cold weather or because of changes that have occurred because of the Liberal government. Many people said that the video was useful and it was helpful uh, in that it provided information that allows them to make a more informed decision about if they want to immigrate to Canada. Now, some viewers left comments expressing that Canada does not want immigrants. I want to clarify that for my last video, I was talking about Canada in terms of the, the government. So the Canadian government does want immigrants. I'm going to show a recent video clip and in this video clip, the Minister of Immigration talks about Canada's plan to accept more immigrants. So let's watch that clip. I'm pleased to share that Canada intends to maintain its target of welcoming 485,000 new permanent residents in 2024 and 500,000 in 2025. Starting in 2026, the number of newcomers we aim to welcome will stabilize at 500,000 allowing for a sustainable population growth. So as you guys can see, in 2024, Canada is going to allow 485,000 immigrants. And then in 2025, it's going to increase to 500,000. And then they're going to cap it at 500,000 in subsequent years. So this shows that Canada, as in the Canadian government, wants immigrants. Now, people who are speaking from their own personal experience and saying that they do not want immigrants to come to Canada, that is a personal opinion and that is not one that I subscribe to. What I'm interested in is talking about recent news that's come out and recent changes that have been put into place that will have a lasting impact on immigrants to Canada. Some people have expressed frustration and they've talked about how immigrants to Canada are creating problems for them, um, whether it's in terms of finding housing or finding work. And those are unfortunate pro problems. And I feel sympathy for those people. But again, the purpose of this video is not to open up this discussion and have people make comments that could be considered xenophobic or racist. Canada, whether you like it or not, is a multicultural country and it is a country that wants immigrants. So the first thing I'd like to talk about uh, is an update from Immigration Canada. And this update is from the official Government of Canada website. This news release was published on December 7th, so three days ago. And it discusses changes that will affect immigration and specifically international students. 
One of those changes is that something uh, that is called the cost of living requirement for study permits has increased. So in the past, a student who wanted to move to Canada and study here was required to show proof that they had uh, $10,000 um, in, their, in their bank. Now that number has increased to $20,635. So it has doubled. This is a very significant change. This means that the types of students that will be allowed to immigrate to Canada or to come study here will change. So starting in January, on January 1st of next year in 2024, the financial requirement for study permits will be raised to reflect the current cost of living. And as such, a single applicant will need to show that they have $20,000, $20,635 in funds to support themselves in Canada, moving up from $10,000, as I mentioned in French. Another thing that the government of Canada is going to change is the number of hours that international students can work. So in the past, students were only allowed to work 20 hours per week. International students in Canada were only allowed to work 20 hours per week, and this allowed them to focus on their studies. Um, but then in November 2022, the government of Canada changed the rules and allowed international students to work up to 40 hours per week. Uh, and then, uh, as of recently, so just a few days ago, they've lowered the number. So what's going to happen is uh, up till April 30th, 2024, international students can work the 40 hours, but then after that time, it's going to be reduced to probably 20 hours a week, or they're discussing maybe 30 hours a week. The main purpose for an international student to be in Canada is to study. However, since most students are currently halfway through their school year and some are working full time to meet their needs, we will extend the temporary policy that has allowed eligible international students to work more than 20 hours per week through till April 30th of 2024, the end of the academic year. We're currently examining options for this policy in the future, but we know that 40 hours a week is untenable if you're a student and are looking to potentially expand off-campus work hours for international students up to 30 hours per week while class is in session. This is a huge change because a lot of international students were struggling to meet the basic requirements. They were having trouble affording daily expenses and the government allowed them to work more hours, which allowed them to afford their living expenses. A lot of news articles have recently been published um, in which journalists have been interviewing international students and it appears that a lot of these students are rightfully concerned that they're going to be struggling to afford tuition, their living expenses, food, rent, all of that because their hours are going to be reduced, as I said, after April 30th, 2024 that have gotten jobs uh, that require them to stay permanent and full-time to have a leg up in their career before they graduate, they may lose all those jobs. Uh, there's a possibility that uh, because everything is so expensive, international students may go out uh, seek for other arrangements that pay under the table. And that's just a very exploitative uh, environment. So the fact that the cost of living requirement is going up or increasing from 10000 to uh, 20,635 means that students that are more financially stable or students that come from wealthier economic backgrounds will be able to come to Canada. And then the students who are not able to afford that or not able to meet that requirement will not be allowed to immigrate to Canada. This is kind of a touchy subject because on the one hand, it's very unfortunate that the cost of living is so high in Canada and students are struggling. But on the other hand, if a student comes to Canada and they are studying, but they're also working 40 hours per week, that means that they're not able to fully devote themselves to their studies. So like I've said in other videos, I work in post-secondary education and I work at a college and this college has uh, a lot of international students and I see firsthand 
the high levels of burnout and the um, difficulties that so many of these hardworking students face because they have to work so many hours to be able to afford life. And they're doing this while they're juggling lots of other responsibilities. And those include struggling with homesickness and isolation and struggling with college in general because school is difficult and stressful. So these changes that the government has just made will have a significant impact on countless students in Canada and countless students that are dreaming of moving here. Now, I should also state that these policies can actually be quite positive, I think. In my personal opinion, if a student does not have a lot of money, uh, the fact that Canada would not allow them to immigrate is actually helping them because they are not going to move to Canada and then suddenly realize that the cost of living is really, really high and it's a huge struggle to just get by. So as you guys can tell, this is a very hot debate, a very hot topic. Um, it is a polarizing topic and one that elicits strong responses. So I hope you guys can keep your comments respectful and we can have a fruitful discussion on this topic. The next thing I would like to talk about is the crime rate in Canada, because it's recently come out that the crime rate has actually increased. And I was kind of drawn to do a little bit of research about this, given that a few people have left comments on my previous video and they've suggested that the increased crime rate is a huge issue and one that um, people should be aware of. So I did a little bit of a little bit of searching and this is what I've uncovered. So I'm going to show you guys this news article um, published by Global News and it was published on November 30th, 2023. So 10 days ago, it says Canada's homicide rate is at the highest level in 30 years. So the article says Canada's homicide rate is at the highest level in 30 years as police reported crime continues to rise in the country, data shows. For the fourth year in a row, the national homicide rate went up in 2022, according to Statistics Canada data released Wednesday. The homicide rate, which is considered a key indicator of the state of violence in society, increased by nearly 8% to 2.25 homicides per 100,000 population. This was the highest homicide rate since 1992, according to the agency. So it seems like there's some truth to this. Um, it seems that people are rightfully concerned about crime in Canada. And according to this article, it's not just a general statement that people say all the time, oh, society is getting bad, society is getting worse. The world is going downhill. Um, in this case, it seems that statistically speaking, crime is increasing. So based on these issues, which is the changes to immigration that will affect international students and this issue of increased crime, here are my conclusions. I think that if you are in the process of choosing a place to move to, and if you're considering Canada, it's important to be aware of these things because they have an impact on you. They can have an impact on you directly, or if you are going to move here and you want to have children here and they are going to go to school one day, all of these things will affect you and your family. So finding a job, finding housing, living in a society where people have a good quality of life, all of these things come together and they can have a significant impact on one's quality of life. So as the old expression or the adage goes, knowledge is power. Being aware of these things and having a realistic view of what life can be like if you move to Canada is important. I hope you guys found this video informative. As you know, I am not a journalist. I'm not a sociologist. I'm not someone studying politics. I am someone who teaches English and I work in education, but I've given my perspective based on what I personally think and what I've observed and what I've read about based on 
some research I've done and some articles that I've read. Of course, there are people who are better equipped to discuss these topics. So I don't suggest that I'm an expert in any way, but I think my view is valid and I wanted to share it with you guys and just give you an update about some changes that are taking place in Canada. So that's it, you guys. I hope you found this video informative. Please keep your comments respectful. And if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit the, that like button and subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can get notified about my new content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.